only way to predict our future on this planet, our only planet, is to create it. But to avoid repeating the actions that got us to this point, we have to understand and acknowledge our past. The Paris Accord and IRA in the U.S., although important steps, fall far short of addressing the catastrophe unfolding. It's clear that events are overtaking us. Achieving net zero is an essential step but won't save us from the ever-growing climate catastrophes. The elephant in the room is the carbon dioxide that we already have in the atmosphere. All these extreme weather events, this is all due to the CO2 in the atmosphere that we already have. We are currently at well over 500 parts per million if we count in not just carbon dioxide, 420, but also methane. The pre-industrial level was 270 parts per million. Well, achieving net zero emissions for all greenhouse gases by 2050 would be marvelous. I don't think it's enough. We need to reduce our emissions by 50% by 2030. That's only eight years away. That's eight harvests. That is students who are currently starting middle school. They're going to be going to college. One of the things that drives me to do this work is seeing uh, some of the hopelessness uh, that the youth have, have shown. They're really incredulous that we haven't done more already and that we've let it get to this point, that we do it under the auspices of preserving the economy rather than realizing that the planet that we live on is the only way we're all going to survive. So where do you go when you learn that the strategy you've been supporting all this time isn't going to save us? One is that we all want to restore the climate. The best part is that we have the technology to do it. We have the technology, the finance, and now what we need is to change our thinking so we're actually pursuing it. The eco-anxiety that people feel is very widespread. And uh, what alleviates that better than anything is taking action. It was like a nickel dropped, and I got that we can do it. It's like the moonshot. The facts of the matter are that we have never made the national decisions or marshaled the national resources required for such leadership. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. This is our moonshot moment deciding that we are going to return our climate to a sustainable pre-industrial level, good enough for our children, the generations that follow, and all life on Earth. Climate restoration means uh, getting the climate back to levels that humans have actually survived long term. Climate restoration makes a whole lot of sense, first of all, because it's win-win, you know, uh, healthier ecosystems, a healthier environment, a better planet is obviously better for us. Many of the solutions for restoration, you know, help us on the way to stabilizing and slowing down the, the feedbacks and the t avoiding the tipping points today. I think what I've seen, especially as a person of color, is well-meaning people come in with, we have all of the answers. Instead of really leaning into the work and saying, I need to first understand the problem I'm trying to solve, which is empathizing, meaningful consultation, gathering those facts, and then not assume that I know the answer and allow the problem to be defined by the community inhabitants, and then to have a collaborative partnership on how we reach the solutions. Currently, there are four areas being developed that seem to hold the most promise for permanent, scalable removal of carbon. We think of carbon as a problem, but it's also an essential element of our planet, with around 50 million gigatons being held in the form of limestone. Limestone is Earth's stable carbon warehouse. A company in California has developed a method of permanently sequestering CO2 at ambient temperatures and converting it into a building material. The state of the climate is very concerning. It's hard to see, it's hard to be here in, in the Caribbean, but it feels really good to be working on something that we believe is truly scalable and can really move the needle in terms of climate uh, and carbon sequestration. Sargassum and kelp 
both effective carbon sinks are being harvested and converted into materials that replace fossil fuel products. Research is also being done on baling the seaweeds and depositing them in deep, sparsely inhabited ocean areas. Alongside a need to understand, well, how can we figure out how to cut our carbon emissions, comes big questions about, well, what is the role of some of our best engineers in the marine environment, which those engineers are things like kelp, things like oysters, things that have, been, that have been engineered for thousands of years to thrive in these places and to provide core functions that really help our whole marine ecosystem thrive. Here we are, we're in a tsunami zone we are routinely preparing for a worst case disaster scenario here in Port Townsend. Uh, we have no preparation for a worst case scenario of a methane burst. Beneath me and under the ground, there are massive blocks of ice. We call them ice wedges. And those blocks are melting. And because of that melt, this puddle is going to become a pond that is the, really the birth of a new thermokarst lake. And this environment can produce a lot of methane gas. Right now we're in a methane emergency. And like CO2, reduction is not nearly enough. Around a third of climate warming is due to methane causing methane sinks to become methane sources, like the vast thawing permafrost of the far north. Methane removal is essential if we are to reduce and stabilize global temperatures. The science and technology are available to achieve this. Right now, the global warming due to methane is 0.5 degrees Celsius, and the carbon dioxide is only about 0.8. So methane is really the second most important greenhouse gas, and acting on it, we can reduce temperatures. Ocean iron fertilization mimics how iron-rich dust is periodically and locally deposited into the Atlantic from the Sahara Desert, providing algae with the iron they need to grow and sequester carbon. The resulting blooms provide a pulse of nutrients that support food webs that revive fisheries. So here we are, out of road and out of time, but not out of ideas or science or resources to restore a world that has been so badly damaged by our inventiveness and insatiable appetite for more. This really is our moonshot moment, where we accept nothing less than what our children and the planet deserve a way back to our future.